Hi Booktube, it's Lindsay again, and today I wanted to talk to you about a little project that I was a part of uh, through the first five months of 2020, and that is a project called Indies Introduce, and this is something that the American Booksellers Association does where uh, publishers nominate their debut novels or memoirs. Um, it can be nonfiction as well as fiction, but it has to be by a debut author and their first uh, published work. And from these nominations, there's a panel of about nine or ten people that work together to narrow down a list of 50 books to the top ten. And at the time um, that I was selected for this panel, I was still working at our local bookstore, Ellen Plum City Bookstore. And so luckily they let me stay on after Ellen Plum's closed, sadly, in January. And it has just been great fun to be a part of this and to get to decide these top 10 books. Uh, the list, the top 10 list was announced today. So I will leave some links in the description box down below so you can go check out the list for both the uh, Summer Fall 2020 Indies Introduced Top 10 and then also the Children's Summer Fall 2020 uh, Indies Introduced Top 10. 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through these books and show them to you. These are the top 10. I also have three that didn't make the top 10 list that, for various reasons, but that I really enjoyed. And so I will go through show these to you. Some I have more to say about than others because some of them I enjoyed far more than I enjoyed others. The very last book that I talk about on the top 10 list is not only my favorite book that I've read for this project, but probably will be my favorite book of 2020. And so I will probably gush about that book more than I do any of the others, but it's so worth it. So let's just get into the top 10. The first one I want to mention before um, I get into the rest is one where I seem to have misplaced my copy. I don't know what happened to it. And that is Dancing with the Octopus by... Deborah Harding. This comes out from Bloomsbury, um, and it's also a memoir as well. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that one because I don't know where my copy went to. Um, but that is one of the first ones in the top 10. The next one then is Dear Child by Romy Hausman, and this is translated from the German, and it is her debut thriller novel. Next up is This Little Family by Inez Bayard, and this is a debut that inhabits the mind of a young married woman, uh, driven to extremes by disgust and dread in the aftermath of a rape. Basically, this woman is wanting to uh, have a baby with her husband, and she ends up getting raped by her co-worker, and then she finds out she's pregnant, and she's fairly certain that the co-worker who raped her is the father. And so... Due to her um, destructive feelings about this, she commits an irreparable act. So that's this little family. Next up is The Second Home by Christina Clancy. And this features three siblings and a summer house on Cape Cod that holds all of their childhood memories and their shared histories and some of their also closely guarded secrets. And so it's a book that talks about family and quirky characters and summertime, all of those things that it's just sort of a, I don't want to say feel good, but it has those fun family vibes to it, right? Um, so that's the second home. Next up is a memoir, and that's The Beauty in Breaking. And this is by Michelle Harper, who is a female African-American emergency room physician. And of course, uh, being an emergency room physician is a profession that is overwhelmingly male and white. And she was brought up in Washington, D.C. And she marries a, a guy she meets when she's in school at Harvard. And they stay together all through medical school until... She gets a job at a hospital in central Philadelphia. And then he tells her that he doesn't want to move with her. 
Um, and so she starts her new job in her new city um, as a newly single woman. And it talks about, um, or Michelle talks about bringing, or about learning to become an effective ER physician and sort of overcoming her past, those sorts of things. This is a really good, beautifully written book. Next up is a novel by Mega Munjmadar. And that is a burning. And this features three characters whose lives become intertwined in the wake of a shattering tragedy. And this book will remind folks a lot of There There by Tommy Orange, if they've read that particular book. This is another one that I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, and this is coming out from Knopf in June of 2020. So look forward to that. And then we have probably my three top favorites that made the list. Um, and that is Nine Shiny Objects by Brian Castleberry. And this is uh, set in June of 1947. And headlines across America are reporting that an aviator from Ohio, Idaho, not Iowa, Idaho, witnessed nine pulsing lights flying over the Cascade Mountains at speeds surpassing those of an aircraft built by humankind. And so then, uh, days later, this uh, Chicago pool hustler hitchhikes out west trying to figure out um, whether or not these are signs of extraterrestrial life. And along the way, the people that he meets and inspires, they start a new community called the Seekers. And this, they create this society where divisions of race, ethnicity, and sexuality are things of the past. So this is just a really fascinating book, and it doesn't go in the directions that you think it will. And of course, there's this whole utopia that comes with its own set of problems. And I, yeah, I really enjoyed this. And then we have another nonfiction book, and this is The Sirens of Mars. Searching for Life on Another World by Sarah Stewart Johnson. And this is a memoir that follows Sarah um, during her time as a scientist and her search with her colleagues for um, finding life on Mars and also talking about the planet Mars. This is very science heavy, but it is so fascinating and so well written. Sarah also talks about how she became interested in science and in astronomy and it's just a great book to read especially if you really like science and planets and space i i love this and several of the other people on the panel did it as well highly highly recommend i'm not sure when this one comes out um it'll be from penguin random house but i can't see a date quickly so, yeah, uh, The Sirens of Mars. And then we get to my all-time top favorite book from Indies Introduced Reading. Also, probably my favorite book from um, for 2020. I, I find it hard to believe that this will get beat out by anything. And that is Fresh Water for Flowers by Valerie Perrin. This was translated from the French by Hildegard Searle. And... I just absolutely love this book so much. It follows Violet, who is a caretaker at a cemetery in a small town. Um, and there are random visitors um, that come along from the grave diggers to the groundskeepers and a priest. And they all visit her um, where they can have companionship and laughter and shed tears together. And so her daily life is lived to the rhythms of their hilarious and touching confidences. However, things changed for Violet by the arrival of a local police chief named Julian Soule, um, who insists on scattering the ashes of his recently deceased mother on the gravesite of a complete stranger. And come to find out, the grave that Julian is looking for belongs to his mother's one-time lover. And this mother's story also intertwines with Violet's own secret past. And this is just a beautiful written book. I was hooked from the very first page. And I'll read that to you now. Uh, the top little quote in italics says, When we miss one person, everywhere becomes deserted. My closest neighbors don't quake in their boots. 
They have no worries. Don't fall in love. Don't bite their nails. Don't believe in chance. Make no promises or noise. Don't have social security. Don't cry. Don't search for their keys, their glasses, their remote control, their children, happiness. They don't read. Don't pay taxes. Don't go on diets. Don't have preferences. Don't change their minds. Don't make their beds. Don't smoke. Don't write lists. Don't count to ten before speaking. They have no one to stand in for them. They're not ass-kissers, ambitious, grudge-bearers, dandies, petty, generous, jealous, scruffy, clean, awesome, funny, addicted, stingy, cheerful, crafty, violent, lovers, whiners, hypocrites, gentle, tough, feeble, nasty, liars, thieves, gamblers, strivers, idlers, believers, perverts, optimists. They're dead. The only difference between them is in the wood of their coffins, oak, pine, or mahogany. So that is Freshwater for Flowers by Valerie Perrin, French novel, and it comes out from Europa Press in June of 2020. And I actually had the honor of contacting Valerie to tell her that her book had made the Indies Introduced Top 10 list, and I got the sweetest reply email back from her. Um, and so it's just been such a cool experience doing this and um i have enjoyed every minute of it and this book made it totally worth it for me um and i hope one day to meet valerie i'll have to brush up on my french if that ever happens but yeah totally one of my favorite books um not just from indies introduced but prior for 2020 um i'll bet good money that this is my top book it will take a lot to beat it so yeah june 20th of 2020 is when this comes out from europa press and I plan to buy several copies uh, to give to some of my closest friends who need to read this because it is that good. And then I want to talk about three books that uh, didn't make the top 10 for various reasons, but that I also really enjoyed. Um, the first one of those actually should have made the top 10, but it couldn't because the publisher pushed back their release date, I think, into 2021, but I'm not positive. Um, that was pushed back because of COVID. And that is The City of Good Death by... Priyanka Champaneri, and this is set in India's holy city on the banks of the Ganges, um, and it is a place where pilgrims go for a good death, um, to be released from the cycle of reincarnation by purifying fire, by purifying fire, sorry, um, and this follows Pramish, who welcomes the dying and assists families uh, bound for the funeral pyres. He has a death hostel that he's in charge of there. And he's been in the city for a while, um, about 10 years, and his cousin from childhood, um, even though, yeah, uh, they haven't seen each other in a long time, this cousin shows up at the hostel. And Pramish doesn't see him when he shows up. He's turned away um, by another person who works there. And so this follows their backstory and what happens to Sagar. Um, and then also Pramish and why these two sort of became estranged, even though they were so close in childhood. And I just really loved this book. It was so good. And I'm so sad that it couldn't make the list because of the, um, changed publication date, but highly, highly recommend when it does finally, uh, hit bookstores. This is a good one to buy. Another book that I really enjoyed was from Tor.com, and this is Fly Away by Kathleen Jennings, and it's a novella set in western Queens Queensland in Australia, um, and this is where a young woman receives a note from one of her vanished brothers, and this note makes her question her memories of their disappearance and her father's departure, and it's a gothic story, um, and has a lot of sort of horror elements in it, I actually read this pretty much in one sitting one night before I went to bed, and I kind of regretted that idea. Um, it didn't give me nightmares, but it's definitely probably not something you should read uh, at night before you go to sleep, because it is definitely got some really creepy stuff going on in it, and I really enjoyed it. I love pretty much anything that Tor puts out and when it comes to novellas, um, and this was no exception. So Fly Away was another one I enjoyed but it didn't make the top 10 list. And then the third one that I enjoyed that also didn't make the top 10 list was a memoir. 
and that is The Names of All the Flowers by Melissa Valentine. And this follows Melissa and her older brother, Junior, um, and they grow up running around the disparate neighborhoods of 1990s Oakland. And they are two of the six children, and they're born to a white Quaker father and a black Southern mother. And then some things happen to Junior, such as bullying, bullying, and a violent attack that sort of sends him off the rails. And then right before his 20th birthday, the family is torn apart when he is murdered as a result of gang violence. And so this is Melissa's memoir about her brother um, and the grief that many black people face because of violence towards them. And it's just heart-wrenching, and I enjoyed it. It's also very well written. And when I say enjoyed it, I mean I enjoyed I enjoyed the writing. The story itself is very sad. Um, but yeah, this is also excellent. Um, and when does this come out? July of 2020. So, yeah. Names of All the Flowers by Melissa Valentine. Alright, so that was Indies Introduce. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if any of these books sound interesting to you, I hope you will uh, pick them up when they do come out in bookstores or online. And if you're curious about Indies Introduce, and want to know more about it, like I said, I will leave links down below so that you can go and check it out. Um, and you can also go and look at the titles for the children's Indies Introduced list as well. Um, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks, BookTube.